Good morning, Colin. Today on CWN, we have some new weekend segments for y'all. And some new sports startup tomorrow. I'm Callie. And I'm Logan. And today is Thursday, January 11th, 2024. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and the Pledge of the Texas, the Texas Flag. The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Texas Pledge. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. We would like to wish Brooke a happy 18th birthday today. Happy, happy birthday, birthday Brooke. Brooke. Hannah spoke to Coach Luna about the incredible job FCCLA has been doing in pre pre preparation for this year's NCJLS homemaking competition. Hey, Cats, today I'm here with Miss Luna. So, Miss Luna, about what can you you're tell planning us a little for about this year's those homemaking projects for That's pretty cool that you were going with Yes, the on oh, January 15th, no, we are so to report to the fairgrounds at 845. Our students will be entering in pies. Um, some of us also have, like, cookies, cupcakes. We have some photography entries. Some of us also did um, an art project with stitchery. Um, I know we have one senior that's entering an art project. Pretty excited about that. Um, they've done so great this semester. I'm so proud of them, and we look forward to putting these entries because last year we only had nine. This year we have 31 entries, so we're going up in sides. That's good. Yes, ma'am. Are you excited? Yes, I'm so proud of FCCLA. Last year was our first year doing it after almost 20 years of not having it, so bringing it back and then this second year getting a lot more entries, I'm very proud of them. Thank you. That's all from us. Now back to the studio. So, Logan, Giselle spoke to you about what you're planning for this year's Fully. That's pretty cool that you're going with an original song. Let's take it to Giselle for the story. Hey, Cats, I'm here with Logan. Logan, can you tell us what you're doing for the talent show? Yes, I can. I'm actually making my own original music this time for the talent show. As you may have remembered from the last year's talent show, I did a bunch of Elvis songs um, as a medley um, for the talent show. And it was a really fun time, but this is my way of kind of branching off from that. So this is my first time endeavoring into music and producing music in general. This is going to be my first public performance in general about my music, so I'm really excited to see how this goes. That's so cool. Make sure to go watch the talent show. Back to the studio. So, Logan, what is that you're working on? I'm working on two songs for the Follies currently. One of them is called Forbidden Love, and one of them is called Struck. I've been in the process of working on them for like three months, so it's really exciting. This is going to be the first time anyone's going to hear it before I start posting it on social media. So it's just gonna be a great time and I can't wait to see you all there. That's great. Just a reminder that the winter dance has been canceled. Here's Lauren to tell us about the li li livestock show cook-off coming up on Saturday. This year, the Henry Borchard Fairgrounds will be hosting the 22nd annual Nueces County Junior Livestock Show Alumni Barbecue Cook-off. Many pit masters are eagerly awaiting the cook-off this weekend to start. The annual cook-off event is an IBCA station event with representatives from the IBCA overseeing the judging. Pitmasters will be putting their favorite spices and barbecue techniques to the test this Friday and Saturday. The three meats of the contest are chicken, pork, spare ribs, and beef brisket. Beans may also be entered. Proceeds from the cook-off will benefit the sale entries, general scholarships, and the alumni charitable activities. If you enjoy barbecue, come out this weekend to the Henry Borchard Fairgrounds on Saturday. We have a new segment for you to let you know what's playing at Movies, Inc. this weekend. Let's send it over to Ashley with the movie list as well as a short description of the movie Wonka. Hey cats, Movies, Inc. is having some new movies showing this weekend. The movies showing are Nice Swim, The Beekeeper, Migration, and Me Girls. A movie that previously showed was Wonka. Wonka is a cinematic experience that captures the magic, magic of Raw Doll's world. Timothy Chalamet and his charismatic portrayal of Willy Wonka adds a modern twist to the character. The storyline is offering a nostalgic feeling to the classic tale while introducing new elements that keeps the audience engaged. Overall, Wonka is a visually stunning and heartwarming journey. The captivating cinematic adventure for both new and longtime fans. So if you're interested in watching a movie, go check one of these movies out. 
Fun Friday is tomorrow, and we have another segment for you called Studio 361, highlighting some events going on this weekend. Here is Mario and Sierra with more, some more information. Hey, cats. Welcome to our new segment, Studio 361, your weekly activity outlet around Corpus Christi. Now, if you look for something fun to do this weekend, a new place called Urban Air has opened up. Be sure to check it out for some trampoline fun. Also, our annual Junior New Oasis Livestock Show is starting tomorrow. To kick it off, our cook-off will begin at 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Go on, check out the food. It might be great. The parade will begin at 10.30 a.m., followed by the Queen's Contest starting at 6.30 p.m. Um, we hope you have a great weekend. Now back to the studio. Miss John's pack chemistry class had a lab this morning over mold conversion. Let's see what she had to say. I'm here with Ms. John. So y'all are doing a lab over mold conversions. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Sure. So um, we're going to convert three different substances from grams to moles. First they're doing is, um, well, they could do anything they wanted to to start with, but we're doing sodium chloride, which is salt, and then um, sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. And they're going to scoop up a tablespoon, mass it out, and then figure out how many formula units that is, and then convert those to, um, I mean, how many moles it is, and then convert it to formula, formula units. And then on the other one they're doing is they're shading a mole, uh, printed out a little mole shade thing, and they're massing the pa the, their paper, and then they're going to shade it with pencil, and pencil lead is actually graphite, which is carbon. And so as you write, you're putting carbon atoms on the paper, and as they shade, they're going to do that. And they get to use the analytical balance because it goes to like four decimal places because the measurement changes can be very small. And from there, they can figure out how many moles of atoms, I mean moles of carbon they have, and then convert that into um, atoms of carbon. It's what we've been doing in class. It's just they're creating their own measurements instead of me just giving them a question with my made-up numbers on there. Now that's all from us, now back to the studio. Thank you. Yeah. Ms. Theresen is the sponsor for UIL Computer Science. He tells us what the students need to do and when they compete in the UIL academics. Hey cats, it's Lucian. I'm here with uh, Mr. Eason, the Computer Science UIL teacher. Mr. Eason, can you tell us about Computer Science UIL? Yeah, so uh, Computer Science UIL um, consists of two, two parts, actually. Um, the first is the written test, uh, kind of like how n people normally think about UIL competitions. Um, 40 minutes, uh, 45 minutes, uh, 40 questions, and it works a lot like the SAT, where you get a question right, six points, you get a question wrong, minus two. So guessing through the whole thing is actually not an advisable strategy. We've had people at district get negative scores before, um, not in our district, but at district from the other uh, schools. Um, and then after that, uh, four students can compete in the written portion on the team, but then three of those uh, actually have the opportunity of sitting down um, with a laptop and they have two hours to complete as many of the 12 given programming labs um, as they can get. So they get more uh, corrects, they get more points, and then that leads us to be able to advance to like regionals uh, and such. So the past two years I've actually had uh, regional qualifying teams uh, and last year uh, my star student Evan Eden, he actually made it to state. So we got to go to Austin and compete at the state level which was really, really awesome to, uh, to, to do. And how do you like being in computer science UIL, Joseph? Uh, it's been a very enjoyable experience. I've, you know, you get to learn things, uh, more programming portions, and just it'll be useful for your life. That's cool. Thank you. Back to the studio. Jasmine caught up with Hannah, a Queens contestant who had the pleasure of going on to KIIII for an interview. Hey, Kat. Today I'm here with the Queens contestant, Hannah Hominick. So, Hannah, how are you preparing for your Queens contest? I've been practicing my talent, which is sign language. I've been getting all my outfits together, um, practicing interview questions, and yeah, I'm really excited. That's really good. So I also heard that y'all had an event this morning with Chris Six News. Can you tell me how that went? Yes, it went really well. Um, I kind of just stood there and waved at the camera <laughs> while Queen Giselle answered questions, but I did get to get on set and take a picture with the um, news anchors, which was really cool and I said my name and what I'm representing, New Oasis County Forest Shop and Ski. That's really cool, good luck. That's all from us, now back to the studio. Thank you, Jasmine. Now let's send it to Michaela with Wildcat Media. Thank you, Akers, and welcome back to Wildcat Media. Cal and ISD posted that there will be a mental health, mental health stress and coping skills at 10 a.m. today on YouTube, so make sure to go check that out or send it to your parents to have them get a better perspective. The link is posted on Instagram at Cal and ISD. Now that's all for me. Back to the anchors. Thank you, Michaela. 
Now let's send it to Sophie with the Rundown Sports after this quick break. Hey cats, this is just a reminder when the weather is bad to put on your low beans, to drive slower, and to remember to turn your lights on. That's all from us. Thank you and back to the studio. Thank you, Logan, and good morning, Wildcats. We caught up with our first year coach, Coach Robertson, on how the first powerlifting meet of the season will go. Let's see what she had to say. Good morning, Wildcats. I'm here with Miss Robertson. So, Miss Robertson, I heard you're going to have a uh, powerlifting meet in Orange Grove. Could you tell me more about that? Yeah, so we have a meet this Friday. We'll be leaving after fourth period. We have 12 of our best lifters. We're going to take them and see how we do. That's really cool. How do you think uh, y'all guys are going to do? Well, most of our lifters, after looking at um, the ranking so far, should actually place, and we might even win as a team. So I'm looking forward to it. That's really cool. Let's take it back to the studio. Our golf team has a tournament this Friday and Saturday. We caught up with a few students to tell us more. Hi, I'm Roxanne. I'm here at Lexi and Addison. Addison, I heard y'all have a golf thing coming up. Can you tell me more about that? Yes, it's a tournament. It's an invitational tournament in Victoria at Riverside. Um, it's a Veterans Memorial tournament. They're ho holding it for us. And how long have you been doing golf? Um, since freshman year. And Lexi, how do you think you're going to do in this Invitational? Um, I think our team will do good as a whole, and we've been practicing a lot and putting work in at the course, so we're ready to go. We're excited. And how often do y'all practice? Oh, we practice Tuesday through Thursday at River Hills. Thank you. That's all for me. Back to the studio. We spoke to Coach Sagoda to get some information on the senior football helmets. Let's take it to him for more. Hi, I'm Cameron Cardona. I'm here with Coach Sagoda. So, Coach Sagoda, why are all these helmets here? Uh, these are the senior helmets uh, from this past football season. Uh, so this is a reminder to you seniors to get your helmet bought by the end of January or you still have to come clean them. And so remember the price is $400. We want these helmets purchased by January 31st. We have Rydell coming the first part of February to recondition and your helmet might be taken off to be reconditioned if you're wanting to buy it. So again, buy them by January 31st. All right, thank you and back to the studio. Some of our football players gave us some predictions on the NFL Wild Card Weekend. Let's see what they have to say. We're in Collins I'm here with Jaden and Sebastian. And you already know it's the best time of the year. It's Wild Card Weekend. So who do y'all got for the Packers and Cowboys game? Well, personally, I am not a Cowboys fan, so I'm going Packers. Uh, Cowboys on top. And who do y'all got for the uh, Browns and Texans game? Uh, I think uh, CJ Stroud is going to take them to a victory. He's very young and very good, so I got Texans. I personally think C.J. Stroud is overrated, and the Browns are winning. Joe Flacco on top. Go Texans. Uh, that's all from us. Back to the studios. Riley spoke to Coach Burnett to get some information on the upcoming basketball game. Let's take it to him for more. Good morning, Wildcats. I'm here with Coach Burnett. So you all be having a game here pretty soon. What day is the game on, and who are you all going to be playing against? We play tomorrow. Uh, we'll be at Kingsville. Our uh, JV Maroon be, will be playing at 5 o'clock. Our JV White at uh, 6.15, and our varsity is going to be playing at 7.30. What were, all, what were y'all's plans on defense for the game? Um, just preparing every day in practice, having good practices, uh, make sure we're executing on the game plan, and uh, just putting everything together. Boys need to stay locked in. We talk about that all the time, and we're just going to go out there and give it our best on Friday. Good luck on the game. Thank you for the interview. With that, back to the studio. That's the latest on Cal on Sports. Back to you, Logan. Thank you, Sophie. Now it's time for your weather report with James right after this quick break. Hey Wildcats, I'm here with Coach Ashburn. Can you tell me a little bit about the movie field trip? Yeah, the movie field trip is Friday morning. It's going to be at Movies, Inc. Um, students who are eligible for it are passing all their classes and have fewer than seven absences. What they're going to do is we're going to call you all out of your first period class once you, um, once you already check in for attendance. And they'll call you out by class. Seniors, juniors, sophomores, and freshmen will walk over to Movies, Inc. You can sit where you want, and the thing is, you get uh, free Coke and popcorn, but if you want to bring your own money, you can buy snacks and other stuff while you're at the theater. Thank you, Coach Ashburn, and back to the studio. Thank you, anchors, and good morning, Cal Allen. Pleasant conditions are going to persist today. However, tomorrow we have a pretty big weather hazard to watch out for. Your forecast presented by Baytech Robinson Families. Currently, temperatures in the lower to mid-70s with winds out of the south at 16 miles an hour and partly cloudy skies. A very nice day indeed. Our Doppler radar, absolutely nothing on it. All the fog from this morning is lifting up from the ground, but it is not raining back down. We actually have two weather alerts, a high wind watch and a red flag watch. Expect both of these to be upgraded to a warning today or tomorrow, especially the high wind watch. And looking throughout the rest of the day, you can see temperatures are going to remain pleasant. 76 degrees at the high 
And again, a normal drop in temperature down to 68 by 10 p.m. And winds out of the south or south southeast at 17 or 18 miles an hour. But we need to watch out for tomorrow. Northwest winds 25 to 35 miles an hour with gusts up to 60 miles an hour. Temperatures will be 64. We, ha we have a little bit more information on that here in a moment. And on Saturday and Sunday, temperatures are again going to be in the 60s. No percent chance of rain at all. Southeast 5 to 10 miles an hour on Saturday and northeast 10 to 15 miles an hour on Sunday will be the wind speeds. We actually do have some very high winds approaching tomorrow. Morning and afternoon, we'll see sustained winds between 25 and 40 miles an hour with expected gusts between 55 and 60. Make sure that any outdoor materials, toys, tools, patio furniture, anything like that that could be easily blown away is either inside or secured where it won't blow away. Prepare for some falling tree limbs and local power outages across the area. We saw a little bit of this on Monday. Take care on the highway. Winds, especially higher up in the air, will be a little bit stronger than usual. On bridges, make sure that you take it slow and careful and be especially wary around high profile vehicles. I'm talking like semi trucks, moving trucks, and school buses. And also dress appropriately for some wind chills. They'll be as low as 35 degrees. And then next week we'll have another weather hazard. Arctic air will hit the area with the lowest highs during the event being between 35 and 45 and the lowest lows being well below freezing. And this will begin on Monday. It will be at its most severe on Monday, but it will also occur throughout the entirety of livestock break. Make sure that pipes in your residence won't freeze and burst. Make sure that there is a small stream of water dripping out of that faucet every night. Protect sensitive plants and keep your pets indoors. We can survive the cold temperatures. They cannot. Take care on the highway again, especially on bridges. Black ice will be a concern. This is ice that is on the bridge but is extremely difficult to see. A lot of the times if you go over it, you won't realize it's there until you're spinning out. And dress again for wind chills as low as 5 degrees Fahrenheit. It's going to be very, very cold during this event. But in much better news, we have two days left until livestock break begins and I can't guarantee anyone else's opinions on it, but I am really, really ready for this one. With that, let's take it back to the anchors. Thank you, James. And that's all your announcements for today, but now it's time for your joke of the day. So guys, what do you call a can opener that doesn't work? I don't know, Logan, what? A can't opener. <laughs> <laughs> For all you social people out there, make sure you're following us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram at Calon TV for all the latest updates. Also, subscribe to us here on YouTube to catch all of our latest videos. And as always, stay classy, Cal Allen.